steel consciousness. It's a gray, misty, rainy day, and I just got into a very hot bath. And I left my tea on the counter, which is a shame. It's steam on steam on steam, and the fourth steam is on the counter. The counter is in the kitchen, and I'm in the bathroom, where the bath is. I put bubble bath in the bath. It's more a, a rainy day, relaxed bath than a bath to get clean. I have a little sponge. It's from the ocean. And it sits in a little dish, a little china dish with a painting on it. The painting is a little blossom on a branch. And the bubble bath is juniper. I have some soap here, a teeny tiny sliver of one that smells like spices. It's barely soap anymore. And another one that's evening primrose. My favorite soap was unavailable, but it's a time of pandemic, so I wasn't going to look too hard for it. I have some shampoo, and I guess today's the day I'm going to do a shampoo review. And the shampoo review is for Avalon Organics. Volumizing Rosemary Shampoo and Conditioner. And this shampoo is terrible and I would not recommend it. It's kind of like, a, it's like it puts wax on your hair. And so it sort of does give your hair this extra body in the same way that just putting a bunch of wax in your hair would do that. Um, but it also has this um, effect of sort of making your hair look super greasy in the way that putting um, wax all over your hair would probably do. And it's terrible. Um, I have this other shampoo I really didn't like, but in comparison to the, um, this terrible Avalon Organic shampoo, um, the other shampoo is great, and I will just continue to use whatever scraps are left of it until I can work up the nerve to go to a place that sells shampoo. Not a grocery store, I'm terrified of the grocery stores still. It really is like, um, it feels like you're in a, some kind of like apocalyptic movie to go to the grocery store. But the apocalypse is, uh, the kind of like a Ballardian apocalypse. Like there's music playing, everything is super clean. People are generally very, very, very polite to each other. Um, and generally extra kind to the cashiers and stock people. And it's a combination of a very sincere and genuine smile shared between strangers and just sort of a blank look of abject terror as people sort of move through the aisles, um, not really considering that there are other people looking at them. Uh, you'll see maybe four people in an aisle looking at something. Not together, they're just kind of log jammed in a section and you, you turn away quickly, take your cart and you do a sharp turn and you go in the opposite direction. You do not want to be anywhere near those people with their coronavirus or their potential for coronavirus. Um, that's how things have changed. I went shopping yesterday and the strong feeling was that uh, I just want to go shopping again, like real shopping, not this sort of um, like uh, like Halloween um, fear farm style, uh, like like a inexpensive movie set or actually a very expensive movie set version of a grocery store. 
but a real grocery store and a shopping mall and a winners and a home sense where I can just browse aisles and I can pick up consumer goods. I can ask the person maybe kind of standing next to me looking at the whisks. I can say, what do you think? Do you think that this is a, a good lemon reamer to get? And they'll look at me and I'll go, yeah. I go, thank you. Or maybe I'm buying a, a shirt or a jacket and I'll hold up the shirt or the jacket and I'll say, do you think I should get this? Does it look good on me? Then if I've got two, they'll look at the two shirts or the two jackets or the two dresses and they'll say, well, that one's better with your coloring or this one's extremely sexy, but it's more of a statement piece. And I'll say, thank you, because I'm looking for something more every day. But what is the every day right now? It's not bad. I have nothing to complain about, as I tell myself every day. Things are fine for me. They're not fine for a lot of people. But it's just a moment in time. Um, and it's all relative. You have to keep up, keep up what you can. People in much worse situations are in way better spaces than most of us because they're able to keep up what they can. Um, but then a reality might hit, somebody might die, or they might get very sick and almost die. It's just mortality. It's mortality plus. Because if you die from COVID, nobody's allowed to go to your funeral. It's like uh, it's like a de every depressed teacher te uh, teenager's fantasy multiplied because they won't be able to attend your funeral in person. But that's just going to make them feel so much more guilty. And with the internet, they don't even have to go anywhere to attend your funeral. They just have to log in, and maybe they'll broadcast it on TikTok. I feel very badly for teenagers right now. Their lives are so hard. Um, every now and then you'll see gangs of teenagers on their skateboards, skateboards and bicycles cruising through parts of the city, um, much better than the teenagers and young men cruising the city in their, um, their souped up cars and motorcycles, uh, on the way to kill themselves or someone else. Very early in the middle of the pandemic in Toronto, um, one of the first, uh, sort of like the drag racing, is that the term for it when there's just one of you? One of the first sort of um, thrill ride incidents to occur was we have this giant fairgrounds just sort of it's in the southwest area of downtown and it used to be a prisoner of war camp and it's been used for military exercises but it's also the site of the best thing that happens all year in Toronto. It's called the CNE, the Canadian National Exhibition. And it's so wonderful. It's so old. If if you grew up in the city, you love the CNE. If your parents grew up in the city, they love the CNE. I'm sure even older people than that, yeah, young people, their grandparents, they love the CNE. A lot of people with their first job. Um, it's a it's a classic sort of county fair with um, like carnies and rides, but it also has. Um, it's in the middle of a gigantic city, so when you go on the Ferris wheel or the kind of like the gondolas that go end to end, um, you just have this spectacular view of a massive city with, with tall, like gigantic 50-story buildings everywhere. Um, and a lake, you get to see a giant lake. It's not a little lake. I don't know if you've been to the Great Lakes before, but they're enormous. And there's a food building, and the food building has like 150 different little restaurants that are all selling incredible food. Everything from like, oh man, these classic deep fried pierogies that are so cheap, and like classic deep fried fish and chips, and Caribbean food, and all kinds of weird sort of like Japanese fusion sushi burrito with nacho kind of things, and uh, freak food like a Krispy Kreme burger. It's just everything. They've got it all. It doesn't matter what your taste is. They've got 99 cent spaghetti still. It's like a welfare pasta sauce company sponsors it. And um, you can get like a little cup of 99 cent spaghetti. And for a lot of people, that's actually like the, the most nostalgic taste is this that like tiny, really inexpensive 99 cent cup of um, food bank. Uh, and then you can eat that and then go buy whatever you want if you have the money for it. 
Uh, this union can be kind of expensive. Sometimes they have evening discounts. So after 5 p.m., Monday to Thursday, you can go and you can meet your date at the CNE. It's not expensive to go. It used to be $5, now it's like seven. And you can do all those things at the CNE. They're so great. The petting zoo is closed, but you can still go on our fun rides, very adrenaline enhancing. You can uh, eat disgusting and amazing food. You can take in, they have these shows, these talent shows. Toronto is different than a lot of other cities in that you need a license to be a, a subway musician. So if you want to be a subway musician, you have to sign up and perform in a talent competition at the CNE. And it happens over many nights. And many incredible talents come through. Um, they also have like a rising star competition for children, which is also just such a spectacular uh, demonstration of the incredible talent we have, not just in the city, but in the region, because a lot of kids' parents will bust them around to display their incredible talent as a dancer or a singer or whatever it is, and all kinds of singing, opera singing, pop, R&B. Um, I don't know if I've heard too much country in the past few years, but there's a lot of that at the CNE too. There are, uh, there's like a, all around Ontario, they have, I think she's called the queen of the fair or the agriculture queen. And so all these smaller fairs that happen throughout the summer in Ontario, they nominate uh, nominate these queens and one of them wins and it's usually a, a girl in her last year of high school who's really involved in farming and she gets her picture taken and she gets to come to Toronto. Sometimes it's a boy. That's how progressive things are now. It's really, 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 really nice. Um, so they take all their pictures, like a nice headshot, and they all get to come to Toronto. And one of them wins and gets to be the, the queen of the agriculture queens. And uh, I don't really know what happens outside of that. That's a whole other CNE, and it's the old CNE, because um, it was founded sort of on the original model of what fairs are supposed to be, which is industry and agriculture, and uh, a model for like what the the best practices today and what the future might hold in agriculture and industry and now industry for the most part has been replaced by shopping and that's something you could you could just go and only shop if you want they have all the major brands they have um, basically everything they couldn't sell they put it in a giant pile and you can buy it for under five dollars um and you can buy stuff for the cottage um some people have cottages and you can buy little boats or like a stand-up paddle or thing, th whatever th things people need at the cottage for uh, water sport recreation. You can buy it there on a discount because it's the end of the season and they have an international marketplace and you can buy silver jewelry very affordably and people bring in uh, gemstones that they've imported and you can get an incredible deals on gemstones as long as you're willing to not have them be like a perfect cut or have... Uh, like maximum clarity, but it's incredible what people are selling. Rugs, rugs from all over the world, just really great rugs. You can get a shiatsu massage. Um, anyhow, it's definitely one of my favorite places and things, and it's not happening this year because of Corona, which makes total sense. Um, a little sad to miss that. And uh, all these teenagers won't get to have their summer job, uh, like making rotis or, um, being like the person uh, calling out who won the like duck duck fishing, I guess that is. It's like a little pond of ducks that go in a circle and you pick one and then it's got a number and you win a prize. My friend used to be the, the duck carny. She was really good at it. Um, but anyhow, these are the, the magical things and places we go to. I forget how I got on to the scene, but does it really matter? This is a... This is my steam of consciousness and it just rises um, and that's where it goes. The sponge I have, it fits in the palm of my hand. It's very spongy, it's very hard and stiff when it's dry, but then I put it in the bath and it's so soft. Um, I think you can use it on your face, but I generally use it on my body. Um, the face is a funny thing. I don't know what to do with my face these days. 
Um, I feel like I just want like uh, to put butter all over it, which is strange because it's it's not it's not dry out. It's very very wet out. Um, but I guess these things don't matter. And I'm wondering why is my face so salty? But actually, it's because I put salt in the bath. No, it's not because this I put salt in the bath. It's because my nose is running. <sighs> That's okay. I decided not to wash my hair because I'm rationing a good shampoo and contemplating when I'm going to put the bad shampoo on the curb. But I feel badly because I feel sketchy about used personal care products, but some people don't. But I feel like if I feel sketchy about it, why would I put that onto other people? At the same time, if I put it in the garbage, then I'm just throwing out shampoo that is still useful, even though it's, I personally think it's garbage. Um, but you know, that's just, that's a thing. I mean, I, I, now's the time to figure it out. If not now, when, because before Corona, this kind of thing was a problem. And after Corona, this thing will be a problem. There was the thing we used to have in the city called a uh, buns trading zone. And it used to be bums trading zone. And there was some sort of, uh, controversy, over the name bum, um, which is funny because most of the people I know who have been bums identify as bums, but I don't, maybe there's like another use of the word bum or it was, it was being used um, in a punching down as opposed to punching up kind of way, I'm not sure. But um, that was originally a place you could go to get really, like trade really nice stuff. Just really, really, if you had like a really special pair of vintage shoes and you never wore them, and you're like, I don't want these, but what I would really night like is like a really nice night table. And you could go and you could probably, maybe you wouldn't get your nice night table, but you might find a lamp that was really nice and you can trade that stuff. But free markets inevitably be, being what they are, people realized that like they weren't getting what they wanted, even though had, they had something of really high value. So the currency became gift cards and bottles of wine, which had like a pretty set value you can you know you know how much is on the gift card you know how much that bottle of wine cost um and so uh you're not allowed to you were not allowed to use currency on this site uh so that started happening and then more and more there just like wasn't good stuff up until i don't know if it still exists but the last time i checked in which was maybe two or three years ago essentially it was just like used makeup and it's a it's a an app you can use if you want to find used makeup that people would like to give you in exchange for a $50 gift card um, or a bottle of wine or two. Uh, and it's gross. I mean, wow, especially now with COVID, that's never going to happen again, at least in living memory, um, unless yeah, in living memory, that will never happen again. Children will be born and their parents will be like, don't use used makeup. And the kids will be like, whatever you say, old person. Um, don't tell me about the coronavirus. But then they will use that makeup and get an eye infection. They will learn too. Uh, I don't know. If you've been in a drugstore, like a drugstore that sells makeup with a dedicated makeup section, they got rid of all the samples. All the samples are gone. That's very noticeable. It's the only noticeable difference in the grocery store, except for maybe the glass partition when you get out. Oh, uh, we're not out when you go to pay at the grocery store. Um, and the last time I bought toilet paper, I was walking down the street at night because I prefer to take my walks late at night. And I went to Dundas Square, which is Toronto's sort of like miniature Times Square. It's kind of like what you would find in a mid-sized Japanese city. Like there's video screens everywhere. Um, it's very it's remarkably clean. Um, it's but it's it's got this real Toronto spin on it in that it's really poorly designed. Um, and so they've got the stage and they have concerts and stuff there, but the whole thing is is badly designed. Um, but that's fine. We have a scramble crossing. That's exciting. And uh, they used to have a hard rock cafe, but it closed and they replaced it with a shopper's drug mart, which is a Quebec based pharmacy chain 
that currently is a, is a global brand. It's a global brand. Um, in Quebec, they're Pharmapri, most every other place there. Shoppers, and if you're using Life Brand anything, it's probably that you're in some sort of shoppers subsidiary that you bought it from. And so I go into the shoppers, and that's also a very elevating experience to go into a drugstore on the corner of like a major downtown gathering place that's sort of like the locus of a lot of the um, like meth and fentanyl um, problems. Pro is problem the right word? I'm just gonna say problems in the city. So I'm wandering around, there's also like people who live in condos and students who weren't able to get out of the city or don't want to leave. Um, and, I and I'm walking around, I'm like, I wonder if they have cheap toilet paper, and they did, it was on sale. But I don't usually leave the house with my wallet, so I was like, okay, I may have brought some money with me, I wonder if I still have any money. So I go to pay, and I kind of like fumble around and fuck up a little, um, and I have to go to the counter because I only have cash. I'm like, do you take cash? She's like, yes. And it was like, after tax, it was six something, and I was five cents short. We don't have pennies in Canada, we only have nickels now. Um, but if you pay uh, by electronic means, then yes, it is by the penny. So I'm like, hey, listen, can you just like do me a solid here, and let me just take the toilet paper for five cents off? And she's like, no, I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm like, okay, I was really beaten. But then I'm like, wait, and I see, I see the manager. I'm like, excuse me, but I only have five cents less than this is worth. Can you just give it to me for that amount of money? And he said, yes. So I triumphantly left with my um, extra discounted toilet paper. Uh, and it felt good because uh, I haven't gone anywhere that sells toilet paper since then. And I would once you're in, you don't want to leave and then come back in again. You've got you've done your trip, you've done your one visit, and that's it. You're done. Um, you want to go back home. You want to see the people you care about, or your television, or whatever it is. Be in your own bathroom, cook your own food, um, and nobody knows anyhow. Maybe maybe coronavirus is transmitted by five G waves. It's not. It is not transmitted by 5G waves. That's not possible. And if it was, they would have just destroyed the earth already without needing a coronavirus to do so. They. Anyway, I'm a little elevated right now too. I'm going to get out of my bath and try and think of something um, nice to do with myself.